been a long while since I flew Air Asia. Surprisingly, I'm flying with them again, and this time it's on an international flight. And to skip the lines, I headed to a check-in kiosk where a staff assisted me in having my boarding pass scanned and printed from a code sent earlier to my phone. Soon as I got my boarding pass, my travel documents were verified. And since this is an international flight, I was asked to settle my travel tax as it wasn't integrated with my fare that time. One more problem. I wasn't able to secure a window seat earlier during online booking, and AirAsia's app won't let me choose seats on my mobile check-in. Worse, the check-in kiosk randomly issued me an aisle seat, which is not favorable to me. The drawback? I have to fall in line at the counters just to purchase a window seat. For those unable to book their meals online, yeah, they can still catch up during check-in. Finally, I'm done with check-in and I've secured myself a window seat. I then proceeded to immigration where lines slowed me down a bit, then headed to the gate areas where my aircraft is assigned. It didn't take long and it was time for boarding. Passports and boarding passes are verified at the gate and once cleared, you're walking towards the plane before you know it. Our flight to Kuala Lumpur today is quite full. Good thing I was able to avail of a window seat. If you're thinking I'm seated at the back, well, those seats are already taken. I'm assigned in the overwing area. Yeah, with the wing obstructing my view below, but still a window seat nonetheless. With limited view at the wing area, I asked the cabin crew if I can transfer to any window seat available, just so I can maximize my shots of the view outside. And guess what? The crew member gladly accommodated my request and gave me an exit row seat. After securing a better window seat, I headed towards the back to check what's happening as well as to get some shots of how the cabin looks like from the rear. One thing I noticed is that our aircraft may not be that new, but is kept neat and tidy anyway. And with preparation still ongoing inside the cabin, I had to return to my seat to see what I can feature in my area. I'm originally seated in uh, row 19. Uh, F, but this is a bit of a group, and uh, I asked the captain if I can move to an uh, exit row, and they gave it for free. So, this is the row, and this is the leg room. Yeah, so, we have better leg room here. Yeah. And while waiting for pushback, I decided to check out my tray table, as well as to dig into my seat pocket to see what I've got here. Of course, there's also AirAsia's safety card which I had to quickly scan through just to refresh me on what to do in case emergency cases would arise. Next that I have in my seat pocket is an air sickness bag, which I hope I'd never use in flight. And a cardboard showing duty-free items for sale on board this flight. And along with it, is a duty-free catalog featuring more items from makeup to liquors of fine brands to toys and other stuff. Then we have another catalog featuring stuff exclusively available from AirAsia. This magazine goes back to back with the in-flight menu. Flip it over and you'll get to see fabulous selections of in-flight meals that they sell on board. Honestly, it got me hungry just by looking at them that it made me think of getting an extra meal other than the one I pre-ordered online. Last I found in my seat pocket is AirAsia's in-flight magazine Travel 360. 
Travel360 features articles about some of Air Asia's destinations, what's happening there, food reviews, as well as insights and tips to help you make the most of your travel. Like many aviation enthusiasts I know, I never miss looking at the last few pages because it's there that I get to see updates about the airline's network of routes. Hi, we're Zeno Khaled with Nick Blue Gunner, Big Countries, I am Sai and Nicole. This flight will take us about 3 hours, 25 minutes. For your safety, your hand luggage must be placed in the operating compartment or under the seat in front of you. With your seat upright, fasten your seal on, secure tray tables and keep your window shades open. Please switch off all portable electronic devices as this will interfere with the aircraft navigational equipment. The use of mobile phone is not allowed during takeoff, landing, and passing until fastened seal on sign is switched off. At the exit before leaving the aircraft, pull the red tag to inflate like this. Do not inflate your life vest until you are at the exit, as this would slow down the evacuation flow. Right after takeoff, the smell of spices from the heated in-flight meals begin to fill the cabin that I had to take a look again at the menu. Shortly afterwards, in-flight meals are sold on board with meals given as priority to those who booked them ahead of time. My pre-ordered meal, nasi lemak, a fragrant rice dish cooked in coconut milk and pandan leaf. Also considered as Malaysia's national dish, it's made up of rice, chicken strips, anchovies, peanuts, egg, and a hot paste called sambal. After meals, it was time for me to do some walking. I also wanted to see the galley at the back. Crew members started selling souvenir items, and upon reaching the rear galley, I just had to take a look of what's available. What can we model, please? Oh, this one five. It was a plastic. Very good. Okay, balik balik. Di ka pala bigas tosa sa koala look for. I'm so tempted to buy a model plane, but since I'm traveling on a budget, I think I'd skip that for now. Thank you. 
after I got me a small souvenir, I headed back to my seat as our plane already started to descend. Crew members spray the cabin with insecticide as mandated by the Malaysian government for flights coming into the country. Finally, we're in Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Terminal 2 to be exact. KLIA2 is where Air Asia operates, and one noticeable structure this terminal has is its skybridge, where planes such as our A320 aircraft would pass underneath it. While the last few people are still making their way out, I took the chance to move to another seat just to get the feel of sitting on one side. Finally, it was time for me to go. Nick, thank you. I had a wonderful flight. Thank you. Bye-bye. As usual, once I got out of the plane, I can't help take some photos and videos of planes while at the bridge. And once done, I had to find my way at the airport's bus terminal as I have another agenda in mind. All right, we just, uh, I just got out of the uh, immigration in the uh, Salaibo Hall and I'm off to uh, Petronas. I have to get there within two hours. <laughs> Just a side story, side trip. The place is like a mall. After clearing immigration, I got me a bus ticket, and the next thing I know, I'm on the road to the city to see the Petronas Towers. All right, so we're finally here, and we, uh, I made it here to Petronas. And finally, I got to see this in actual. Oh, yeah, no. Um, okay, so since we've seen this already, uh, I gotta go grab something to eat. And after that, I headed back to the airport by train, which got me there in half an hour, which gives me time to explore KLIA2 without any rush. Um, back here in NASA, Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Terminal 2, and uh, there's a good sky deck here. <laughs> Not a sky deck, but uh, there's a good view there. Para makita mo mga planes na naga tumagalaw. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I gotta go get myself a uh, durian sundae, some McDonald's. Thank you for watching my travel vids. Bye bye.